So when I was a little girl, I used to have a recurrent dream. I would find myself on a beach at night, and I would notice that part of the ocean was glowing a brilliant turquoise light. When I saw that light, I knew it was time to dive in, because within it, I could swim and breathe underwater like a fish. As you can imagine, I was always really disappointed to wake up from this dream. And unfortunately, the sea was back to being itself, impenetrable. I think we all love the sea. It's wide, it's blue, we're drawn to it. We love to holiday and relax beside it. We might even go diving and swimming in its shallows. But for the most part, the sea is impenetrable. We don't see what's within. It's a flat, featureless mirror reflecting us back at ourselves. On the odd occasion that we do get under the waves, we need oxygen tanks and equipment, and we have to stay vigilant to the point where we might get disconnected from that experience of truly being present in the ocean. Apart from a few very elite underwater explorers, such as freedivers, we never really get to experience what it's like to be a fish or an aquatic mammal, to be truly living and breathing under the ocean. It should be no surprise, then, that 95% of the ocean has never been explored. More people have walked on the surface of the moon than have been to the very bottom of our own oceans. And sadly, it's also unsurprising that we pollute and damage this environment. As we don't see within the oceans, we don't care about them. Out of sight is out of mind. Until now. The overview effect was a term that was coined by Frank White in a 1987 book entitled The Overview Effect, Space Exploration and Human Evolution. It touches on a cognitive shift, uh, an epiphany, if you like, that's experienced by astronauts when they look at the planet Earth from above. This moving and emotional connection to our planet can be a life-changing experience for the very lucky few that have witnessed it. But however, with the advent of new material sciences, we start to be able to bring this experience closer to home. Let's call it the underview effect. The experience of diving in a new context, in a submersible that's created completely out of a transparent material. So how did this happen, and how does it change our connection to the oceans? Well, these submersibles are not the same as the tin can submarines that you had in the past. They tend to be constructed around a sphere, which means that the passengers inside can see in every direction. Perhaps most importantly, that sphere is created out of a type of acrylic that has almost the same refractive index as water, as we can see here. This is actually a piece of a submersible hull that when we put it in the water, we can't see it anymore. And it just gives us a completely different experience of being in the ocean. So when you talk to people about submarines, they tend to have the same reaction. Fear, claustrophobia, and a huge wide gamut of expressions like oh my goodness, we're going to die, we're going to get lost under the ocean. And it's kind of normal when you consider that most people don't have much information or know much about these machines. I think submersibles are faced with the same kind of fears and prejudices that airplanes were faced with in the early days of aviation. A hundred years ago, people probably thought it was just as strange to be up in the air like a bird than to be under the ocean like a fish. It was seen as an unnatural habitat but things are changing. As you can see here in this submersible, these subs have now increased visibility. You're losing the boundary between yourself and the ocean. You can do science and research. My fellow TEDx speaker and the leader of a fantastic mission called the Necton Mission is currently doing research to define a baseline for the ocean's health using, amongst other things, submersibles. And my colleagues have told me about amazing experiences they've had. They've seen 
gigantic six-gilled sharks. They've seen giant manta rays sliding over the surface of the submersible. They've seen hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean that make it look like it's, we're on another planet. And one of my colleagues even witnessed a giant squid at almost 1,000 meters under the ocean. One of my favorite stories was told to be my, my industry colleagues, Vincent Perrybone and Patrick Lahey, who's a, a veteran submersible constructor and pilot. They were diving off the coast of the Solomon Islands, looking for bioluminescent animals like this one. They were rising up and down the water column 100 meters at a time, trying to find these animals. And when they got to about 600 meters under the ocean, they closed their eyes, and they let off a strobe. And when they opened their eyes again, they were surrounded on every side by thousands upon thousands of glowing bioluminescent animals on every side, as if they just landed in the middle of a starry galaxy. On a whim, one of, my co one of the colleagues grabbed a flashlight, and he pointed it into the ocean and flash, flashed into the water. Can you imagine his surprise when something flash, flashed right back at him? This is the kind of experience that we can't really have in any other vehicle under the water, and there's so much more to discover. As you can see here, we can use these subs for science, exploration, and research. But I think something more visceral is coming out of this technology. It's breaking down boundaries. As we take these machines into the ocean, we enter into a new age of the gentleman and gentlewoman explorer in this vast realm. But as we do that, we lose these boundaries between ourselves and the oceans and become one with it. Yeah, this is our underview effect. It's the effect of not just working and moving in this oceanic environment, but calling it home. We start to see the valleys and the mountains and the animals under the surface, much as we would on the land. And most importantly, we can't willingly destroy and damage this place if it becomes home, because it's our backyard. I had my own underview experience just at the beginning of this year, when I was diving a submersible. When I was down there, I was overwhelmed by two very, very strong emotions. The first of which was excitement. Here I was in this magnificent blue environment, completely unencumbered, not having to think about breathing or speaking or anything at all. It was awe-inspiring. But the second thing that hit me was awe at the beauty and an incomprehension how we could possibly want to damage this environment. It also wasn't lost on me that this was made possible by a form of plastic the very thing that's currently polluting uh, our oceans and killing lots of undersea animals. An irony. But we have to hope. And we have to get more and more people under the ocean. They need to see this new window on the ocean too, so they can start to care and protect this environment. And most of all, we have to value the emotional connection that we form to this place just like the astronauts, because that is what will make us care and protect this fragile wilderness. And as for me, well, I'm back under the ocean. I found my turquoise light again, but this time it's real. And we can all dive in. Thank you.